Good evening, everyone. We would like to call to order the regular board meeting held tonight here at Science Park High School. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6 at SEC, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by advertising in the Star Ledger, El Nuevo Coqui, Haiti Progress, and Luso Americano newspapers, and by distribution to administrative offices of the Newark Public Schools. A copy of this meeting notice was forwarded to City Hall for posting. This is a regular meeting, Tuesday, October 30, 2018. If board member Asia Norton can please lead us in the flag salute. Mr. Bledsoe, Ms. Gaddy, present. Ms. Gomez, present. Ms. Haynes, present. Ms. Hill, present. Ms. Norton, present. Ms. Owens, present. Mr. Padilla, present. Ms. Garcia, present. We have a quorum. I would just like to mention that board member Bledsoe called. He's going to run a few minutes late. He's at a prior commitment. He should be with us shortly. Thank you. First on the agenda are uh, greetings from the principal of Science Park High School. Good evening, Superintendent Leon, esteemed school board members, Newark Public Schools staff and honored guests. My name is Kathleen Tierney. On behalf of the administrative team, staff, students and families of Science Park High School, I welcome each of you here tonight. I am honored to bring greetings on behalf of the Science Park community. Some brief highlights of the year thus far. In August, we were ranked number 53 in the state by New Jersey Monthly Magazine. We currently have 18 students interning with Audible right here in Newark. We will be sending one student to the School for Ethics and Global Leadership in Washington, D.C. for the spring semester. And our girls soccer team made it to the second round of the state tournament for the first time ever this season. To say that I am proud of my staff and students is an understatement. Our goal for this year is twofold. We aim to solidify our place among the academic elite, while at the same time promoting the social and emotional well-being of our students, girls and boys, from all backgrounds and upbringings without exception. But it truly does take a village to do this and to do it well. So I ask of each of you here tonight, how do you contribute to the education of our children? Do you support school events by actively participating in them? Do you contribute to fundraising efforts? Do you volunteer time at a school? Do you ask school and district personnel how you can help? I know I can't do it alone. I know my staff can't do it by themselves either. We need you, the parents, the community, the district leadership. And I'm, I know my school is great, but I also know that it will be greater with you by my side. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Tierney. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We need a motion. Ms. Norton, second. Ms. Hill, any discussion? This is the minutes of the September 18th board business meeting and September 25th board regular meeting. Any discussion, any questions by board members? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we need a motion from a board member to go into executive session at this time for a short time. And the purpose of the executive session will be for matters within the attorney-client privilege and personnel. We need a motion.
Ms. Haynes, a second? Yes. Board member, we need a second? Mr. Padilla, second the motion. Any discussion? Do we want to hold up on this motion? Yeah, because I thought the student report, he was going to report out. I'm just saying. I was Correct, but we did not see the student on the DIAS. That's why we decided to move forward with the executive session. If the student can please take his seat and report out. Thank you very much. We're going to table the motion to go into closed session until after the student representative's report. Good evening. Um, so there was just a small thing that I wanted to report. Um, I think everyone here knows that there was the college fair that we had uh, this year for Newark Public Schools. Um, I just wanted to say, in based on the feedback that I received from students, um, there was a lot of positive feedback about how everybody, you know, every everything went, and a lot of students were um, did get a lot of good information from the college fair itself. Um, there were a lot of students who were, who were saying that information they didn't know previously to the college application process, received a lot of information that would help them as they started in these crucial months. Um, so that was a good thing to hear. I also did hear, though, that some students wish they had more time, more resources in schools themselves. Uh, so I think that that's crucial, for, for especially for seniors. I am one myself. I know that if there was more access to uh, college application process help of some sort within our school buildings, that that would definitely ben be beneficial in some way. But I definitely think that this was a great first step that we're finally talking about students receiving the help that they need because these months are very stressful. Um, and I also think that the time that was put into it was also a, a good cause because of the fact that it wasn't only meeting with um, schools, it was also with personal statement assistance, which a lot of students struggle with because not many of us are taught to write narratives in our school buildings. M more, more so we're taught to write argumentative essays. And just because there's a lot of questions that we might have that not a lot of people know how to answer because only some people are qualified to tell us about how the college application functions, how best to approach it. Because compared to some people who can afford to pay for those tutors, not a lot of us can. So it was definitely really beneficial and if we continue in this process, I can definitely see great things. Um, and that was my thing to report. Uh, my second thing that I wanted to report real quick was um, my advocacy statement. What I want to do is uh, the student rep a lot of the time has difficulty in reaching all of the students. I, for one, attend Science Park High School, which is its own bubble of sorts. So things happening at Westside, Shabazz, aren't really accessible to students like me or any students really outside of that school. So one thing that I did want to start, um, and I definitely hope that um, uh, Mr. Leone and the other, bo other board members are willing to help, is to have an Edmodo page or something of that sort where all students have access to it, where if we did want to start an event, if we wanted to start a walk, if we wanted to start, or if we wanted to put board meetings in a certain area for students to start attending, because a lot of students don't even know that these board meetings are happening at this moment, there's some way to access that information. There's some way for all students to say, okay, I'm going to go on Enmodo and there's a whole list with things that they can help to contribute. Because we all know that if we want to get anything done, there definitely has to be student support. Parents need to know and this is the way to do it. It's to have a method of communication that's lacking right now. Because what happens up here, a lot of the people don't know about. I was a student for three years prior to, prior to being a student rep. I didn't even know there was a board until my junior year. So that's definitely something that that line of communication needs to happen and I definitely think that would be a great idea. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, student Ferreira. Okay, back to the motion to go into executive session. Ms. Haynes made the motion and Mr. Padilla seconded it. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? We'll go into closed session. 
for the purpose of discussing matters within the attorney-client privilege and personnel. We do not expect this to be a long executive session. Thank you. Okay, we're good. May I have a motion? We're back in session. Motion. Second. Motion by Ms. Haynes, second by Ms. Norton. All in favor? Aye. Reconvene at quarter to nine. Quarter to eight? 747. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda is the board chair's report. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for waiting patiently while we were in executive session. Good evening, fellow board members, superintendent, administrators, students, families, and constituents. Thank you for giving us your time and joining us this evening. I would prefer we did not have to start meetings on a somber note, but we cannot ignore all the census acts of violence around the world. We are extending our sympathies to the victims and their families. Let's take a moment of silence to acknowledge the families and friends of the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting and the 16-year-old Bobby McKeithen of Matthews, North Carolina. Thank you. I read something that stuck with me. If we spread love and kindness as quickly as we spread hate and negativity, what an amazing world we would live in. Thank you. Every time I enter this building, Science Park, I feel a sense of pride because one of my three sons was a student here. He's now a junior at William Patterson University studying to be a psychiatrist. But he got his start here at Science Park and I am proud to be a Science Park alumni parent. Let's go Chargers. Thank you, Dawn. Exactly seven days from today, voters will go to the polls for midterms elections. If you can put the slide up, Nancy. Of course it is. In addition to voting for the midterms candidates, there are two questions on the ballot. One refers to securing our children's future, Bond Act, and the one that I want to draw to your attention to is the Newark Board of Education public question, whether Newark will have a type one or type two school district. Type one appointed by the mayor, or a type two elected by the voters. This important decision is part of the transition to local control. The board in the district had a number of events around the city to inform voters, for example. On October 15th, there was a referendum informational session at Science Park High School that was a collaborative partnership between the city of Newark, the Trust for Education, the Newark Board of Education, the Abbott Leadership Institute, and New Jersey School Board Association, who were the facilitators. We've also taken advantage of the Newark City Learning Collaborative Roundtable, which has held events at Eastside High School, Jehovah Jireh, and Malcolm X Shabazz High School. The good news is there is still an opportunity for you to get information around the referendum. There are two upcoming roundtables on, thir on Thursday, November 1st at Central High School, Monday, the day prior to election, November 5th at Barringer High School. Both sessions are scheduled between 6 p.m. and 8. Hope you can join us. Just be hope you can join us because not only will you receive valuable information about the ballot question, but you will also hear about the post-secondary outcome report. Check out the district's website for additional information. On October 1st, the district celebrated the official opening of the new South Street School located at 44 Herman Street. On October 19th, board members Flohisha Hill, board 
member Reginald Bledsoe, Yambly Gomez, Asia Norton, and myself participated in the ribbon cutting ceremony, acknowledging the name change of North 10th Street to Salome Ureña. As the mother of three young Dominican men who attended North Public Schools, I was honored to be the part of renaming North 10th Street to Salome Ureña School. The initiative began some time ago with former board chair Ariana Perello of the North Board of Education who recognized the contributions of Salome Ureña and wanted to find a way to memorialize them for everyone to remember. Salome Ureña was influenced by literature. She was a poet and founder of women's higher education in the Dominican Republic. I think the timing of the event was perfect as we see more and more women making their mark in the world. This year, many students from schools around the district participated in the 2018 Geraldine R. Dodge Poetry Festival. Board member Gaddy played an integral role in bringing our students back into the folds of Poetry Festival. And everything that we heard indicates that it was extremely successful. Poetry engages students on so many levels, listening skills, critical thinking, and opportunity to express their thoughts in a positive way, public speaking, building confidence, and so much more. We look forward to even higher levels of participation next year. Thank you, Board Member Gaddy. The district is looking to partner with organizations in effort to replicate some of the good things happening in our schools. One idea that is gaining the in momentum is organizations adopting our schools. Conversations are being held with number of organizations like Clara Mass, Beth Israel, University, Rutgers University, and the Urban League, a few to name. We will share more information as it becomes available. In the meantime, great things continue to happen in the district. On October 24th, the district hosted its first college fair under local control, as you heard from our student rep, Mr. Pereira. Nearly 42 colleges and 2,300 students from 17 high schools attended. On October 25th, the Human Resources Department hosted a per diem teacher hiring fair in an effort to increase our per diem pool and to invest in the talent that could become teachers. More than 300 applied and nearly 200 applicants were invited to the fair and that number about 100 participated. The U.S. Soccer Foundation and the New York Red Bulls unveiled a new soccer mini pitch at Luis Munoz Marin School this past Thursday, October 24th. This is the fourth to be open this year. The others include Belmont Runyon, Brick Avon, Rafael Hernandez School. This is the fourth of 20 pitches that will be open throughout the district over the next five years. Thank you to Margarita Muniz and her team for securing this partnership. The board members attended the NJSBA Workshop 2018 conference. The conference was great and not taking anything away from other districts, we walked away with knowledge that our district is better shaped than some other of our colleagues. In addition to our mandated training, some of the other sessions were communications during a referendum, superintendent evaluation process, keeping school documents and records secure, implicit bias, everyone has them, school safety, a whole child approach, my life, my power, social emotional training, the sunshine law, factor fiction. Those were just some of the sessions we attended. The next step for us to share the knowledge with each other so we all can learn from each other. In closing, I just wanted to remind all registered voters to go to the polls next Tuesday, November 6. Polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. This is an important decision, is a part of local control. We have the power to vote and our vote makes a difference as parents of students here in the city of Newark. Whether you're a public school parent or a charter school parent, please come out and cast your vote. Your voice is your vote. And in closing, if you are not at the table, you are not on the menu. That concludes the chairperson's report. Thank you so much.
Next, we have an action item. Board resolution 10.1, the harassment, intimidation, and bullying resolution. And we need a motion to adopt that resolution. Motion by Ms. Norton, second. Second by Ms. Hill. Any discussion? Any questions by board members? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we have the superintendent's report. Uh, good evening, Madam President, members of the board, and members of the uh, community. Um, we are extremely excited about a number of items. This part of the school year is extremely important. I'm uh, excited to share some uh, important information about where uh, we are, the status of uh, the focus in the district, some information that was shared with you during the months of um, August and September, just to get everyone uh, on the same uh, page as possible. Uh, let me begin by taking the opportunity and uh, wishing by the time that this broadcast, um, uh, it, this taping is actually broadcast, we, uh, uh, we will have had a number of our football uh, teams in this um, season and hopefully continuing in the uh, ultimate of championships. We have four of our six high school football programs in the championships, Shabazz High School, Week Wake High School, Westside High School, and Central High School. And we're extremely excited and we're hopeful that by the time the students and their families as well as members of the community see this broadcast that the students um, did extremely well to let them know that we're extremely proud of them and that we just hope and wish the very best for them. Uh, Eagle Academy will have a uh, is in the cross country meets. Eastside High School is in the um, soccer um, um, sectionals. And Science Park uh, today entered into the uh, first round um, as well as Technology High School. So we take this opportunity to wish all of those programs lots of luck. During the course, they deserve that applause when they see this. So, yay. Just to brief everyone, during the course of this month, we had a meeting with the Essex County delegation, my entire executive staff team, and we met with the 28th and 29th legislative uh, districts, Senators Rice and Ruiz, Assembly uh, members Caputo, Pinto, Marin, Spate, Tucker, and Timberlake, as well as the Essex County uh, chairman. One of the things that we wanted to do was to apprise Essex County of the great work that we were doing in our uh, city. And I was very grateful that they uh, scheduled this meeting with us. And we will be doing the exact same presentation to our Newark Municipal uh, Council in the coming uh, weeks. In addition, some of you may have uh, received this information. A delegation from China was visiting here in the United States, um, three members of their educational system, as well as three high school principals, and we had an incredible exchange with them, and board member Bledsoe was present at that event. During the course of last week, we did have our college uh, fair. We had uh, over 2,300 students in attendance. I want to take this opportunity to thank Mary Lee Harvey, who was the chairperson of that event. She did an absolutely incredible job with teams of um, school counselors, as well as folks from our community who volunteered, as well as all of the colleges that were in attendance. One of the things that I wanted to share is that we uh, completed a survey of our students, and uh, there were not a number of really good recommendations that either have already been recorded or that they made with regards to making this event uh, even better. One of the things that we uh, asked of the seniors at the start of the school year in September uh, was the importance of having the college fair. And they indicated that obviously having it was extremely important, but uh, hosting it in the uh, spring would have been great as juniors. So when I met with the juniors, we actually asked them, would they want a college fair their start of their senior year or the tail end spring of their junior year? 
and they obviously requested for it to be held in the spring of this year. So I'm extremely excited, although I don't have the date set yet, but in the spring we will actually host a college fair uh, for the class of 2020 uh, here uh, in the city of Newark, and we're extremely excited about that. One of the things that I will share with you, we're gonna talk about where some money is going so that you are aware. Three laptops, we had three sessions during the college fair. I currently have, of all of the seniors in our school, 700 students who are exceeding the Newark Academic Challenge for Kids. And what we will do is from each of the three sessions that occurred during the college fair, we will actually pull one of those students from each of those sessions and they will be receiving a laptop uh, that will be theirs obviously to keep not only while they continue in high school but obviously when they uh, enter into college just to let them know how important their involvement uh, not only is in our college fair or was in our college fair but is in our schools on a daily basis. As you are already well aware last week the New Jersey uh, School Board Association was held and I have to share with you that all nine board members were engaged in a number of uh, uh, sessions throughout the course of their stay and definitely getting the um, credits that they actually need uh, to be the type of board members that they work extremely hard every day to emulate. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to let them know that I was extremely proud of them and um, all of you um, would uh, obviously uh, want them to do what they did, to be in the sessions that they experienced, and to participate. And one of the learnings that occurred on my part, as well as on the members of the board, is that we are actually um, not only playing in this game, but we're actually making exerted efforts to lead it. So our challenge will be that at next year's school board association, we will actually be leading sessions that will um, impress uh, all of our counterpart school districts throughout the state. Last week, in addition, we had our very first ever civics day. Board member Owens um, put really good pressure as the INP uh, program and instruction uh, chairperson and really challenged the district to do better for its community and in fact joining with members of the community and a number of our high school students we actually offered our first ever civics day on the 25th to end last week in an incredible way, we had sway in the morning on the evening at Westside High School on Friday where he actually tapped the genius that's actually in our city and showcased them and extremely proud I was of our students um, uh, at Westside High School. On this Saturday, um, I had a book reading for children at Source of Knowledge right here on Broad Street. Uh, board member Hayes, uh, Haynes was uh, present. And one of the important things that I would want to take this opportunity to share to our, not only members of the community that are present, but our viewing audience, is that this school district will be extremely sensitive to the types of books that we purchase in front of our students. Culturally relevant education is extremely important to us. We will have the very, very best books in front of our students, and not for anyone to be very afraid, but some of the very, very best books actually are of people of color and that um, demonstrate the greatness of their accomplishments, and our children will not be denied the opportunity of seeing faces that look like them in our respective classrooms. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, VH1 Save the Music Foundation um, received, the district was honored in receiving a grant that is only being received in four cities, Miami, Philadelphia, Brooklyn, and yes, Newark, New Jersey. There are 16 schools that are in the initiative in its second year, and there are 15 elementary schools and one high school. The only high school that's in the initiative received this information yesterday um, morning uh, with uh, VH1 and Wyclef Jean, and that was Barringer High School. So Barringer High School is extremely excited to begin to change the conversation of what people think about the third, the third oldest high school in this nation. 
is extremely important for the viewing audience as well as those in attendance right now to understand that this school district is making aggressive and intentional moves to improve every school in this school district and that does not leave any of our high schools um, behind. Today, today, in preparation for next week, we began the New Jersey mock election where students actually voted for the senatorial, senatorial candidate uh, that will represent this state. And it's extremely important for everyone to know that members of the Newark Student Union, who has played a very integral role with me, in particular uh, Bradley Gonmia, has um, you know, challenged us to be a little bit better than, than that. And I am proud to announce that tomorrow morning, all of the students in our school district will have three days to answer the two referendum questions that the board president has shared will be the responsibility of voters in this city uh, to answer. So we will actually hear from our students as they vote during the course of these next three days. This is civics engagement at its best. It comes from the top down, it goes from the bottom up, and it meets in a pretty middle of a school district on the move. <laughs> Today, a very important conversation occurred where members of this board were presented with a number of schools not the names of the schools, but a number of schools that we will be changing for next year. I call this a portfolio conversation. And in the last seven years, the portfolio conversation has always suggested to our community that that means a school is closing. I have heard people articulate and use the phrase that I've used called portfolio options and people misunderstand that to mean what has meant in the last seven years. This administration will be about improving our schools. If, if at any point in time, if at any point in time, a school needs to not exist, the way that that will work will be an involvement with the parents at that particular school, anyone who's in that community who finds that school to be of importance for the children there, it'll be a discourse on why we are there. And that doesn't happen before we actually try to actually make the schools better. So I'm proud to announce, so I'm proud to announce that the first of the six schools we will be making changes to is in fact Bruce Street School for the Deaf. At Bruce Street School, and those of you who have heard this part of the testimony that I've given in the past, you know that my oldest sister is deaf. Um, not that that's important to this conversation, or not that her husband's father graduated from Bruce Street in the 1950s. But to understand that if we cannot do the best that we can for the students who need us the most, then what makes you think we're doing well for the kids who really don't need us? So ultimately, we're making, we're making no pun intended, a loud statement today. So a committee met, and that committee has been assigned the responsibility that I actually tried to initiate 10 years ago. And that was to reimagine Bruce Street by making it the best school for the deaf in the upper part of this East Coast. The, the, best, the best school for deaf children is at Gallaudet University in Washington, DC. So in the coming weeks, um, and months. We will give dates to the members of the board to see if any board members are actually available to join us. And we will be visiting two schools, Gallaudet University, which is a kindergarten through college school for the deaf. It has the model elementary school and high school. And the university actually has classes that is not only for children, for adults who are deaf, there are hearing as college students that actually take advantage of going to an incredible college called Gallaudet University. We have Newark students who have gone to school there as well. And we will go there to actually see what the very best looks like. 
and we will be challenged to try and make our school district better. The other school that we will be visiting will be Katzenbach in Trenton uh, to actually uh, assist us in redesigning the curriculum that we are providing there, as well as the um, modifications towards making instruction better. Here's a perfect example as what we're going to do is we're gonna take a school where it exists and we're gonna make it far better than it has ever been in the same school where it exists. This Friday, I'll be meeting, as all of you are aware, we're in the process of doing Newark Public Schools Clarity 2020. That will be the one-year strategic plan that follows this transition plan. And this Friday, I'll be meeting with major organizations uh, throughout our city who are um, believe that we can actually help make this school district better. This Saturday, will be my second Saturday breakfast with the superintendent. It'll be in the East Ward schools. The last Saturday breakfast was in the South Ward schools that I held it at uh, Belmont Runyon School. This session will be in uh, Ann Street School at 30 Ann Street. Just to clarify, because a lot of people who came to the meeting thought that it was a presentation where I would have an overhead and I would talk at people and then allow them to ask questions. That is not superintendent breakfast on a Saturday with this superintendent. What Saturday breakfast with the superintendent is, is a three hour open office hours for any parent, any parent and their child, or any parent or a child, that they will have a one on one with me, not with anyone else on my staff, just me. We will eat breakfast, they will talk to me about anything that they wanna talk about, no subject is off limits. At Belmont Runyon, I had students with their parents meet with me, and I even had two high school students who came to meet with me alone. It was an absolutely incredible session, and I look forward to the next one in the East Ward. The next ward will be the North Ward, and information as to the dates and times of that session will be obviously made available to each of the schools and broadcasted on our district's web. November is a critical month. We are hoping to report out on all of the academies that will be opening new at each of our comprehensive high schools for next school year. Simultaneously, we will be sharing all of the incredible changes that are occurring in the magnet high schools. The years of you attending a magnet high school because you chose it is not how it works anymore. In order to attend a magnet high school, you actually have to pass an admissions test, and we will be actually informing people of the dates of that admissions test in January, when in fact, um, after the window closes uh, for the application period, that in fact, decisions will be made. So dates to remember. December 3rd is when the application window opens. February 15 is when the application window closes. On December 8th, we will be having fairs of all of our schools, and in particular, the high school fair will be held, uh, all of these fairs will be held, but in particular, the high school fair will be held on December 8th, it's a Saturday, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at, uh, the location is Barringer uh, High School. Any other developments that we do not um, uh, clarify during the month of November, we will make sure that we address during the uh, December months. January to April will be a number of curriculum reviews and approvals that will be submitted to the board based on these new high school academies. In April will be the budget for this school district. And I share with you, as I have shared every month on this, inner, on this uh, system broadcast that in fact major reorganizations will occur at the April uh, budget hearing for the following school year. Beginning with summer offerings that will be occurring in the early spring as well as the college fair that will be occurring for our juniors. In May, all eighth graders who will be attending a high school in Newark will be required to attend their freshman orientation, and we're extremely excited about that because our eighth graders, when they're going to ninth grade, need to actually go to high school before the start of school so that they can be, in fact, prepared. June, we will make sure that all of our students are registered to attend to the schools that they will be reporting to in the following year. In the years past, we have opened up a free window. You can register whenever you want to after you have been assigned to your school of choice. Uh, no, that's not how this will work. 
you will have an application period and it will close. You will receive a letter that says, this is the school of the options that you requested that you were matched to, and you will have a small window to actually register, and every student will have to be registered um, by June as it relates to that. So that gives you all the work that we're doing going into um, the, um, what is that? Oh, that's right. So um, Madam Vice President made a very good point that I have shared um, that there are six schools where we're making portfolio changes and I only show, shared with you one. By the time this broadcast is shown, I will have met with the families of Bruce Street to make sure that they are aware that the committee will involve a parent and students of that school. All of the other schools, once I've done that with those respective families, then I will broadcast to a larger, larger audience as to who all those other schools are. So I understand that this keeps you in the dark for a little bit, but trust me, there is light at the end of the tunnel. September. Well, a lot of things happen at the start of this school year. Let's start with August. In August, I challenged my staff to actually uh, give me five. I needed every single one of my staff members to call five students, five members of their respective families to make them aware when the first day of school was and the importance of attending school regularly. A couple of, um, two weeks ago, we reported that we had above 90% attendance on every single one of the day, on every single one of the days during the entire month of September, and we're extremely proud of that. Um, although I find it that it was students that came to school and parents who made sure of it, I will definitely add the fact that our staff was critical in helping us accomplish that great um, end. In addition, we share with you reading inventory results of a test that I required all of the students to complete during the first couple of weeks of school. The results of that achievement indicate that students, if in fact they're educated and we monitor that education, that they will be consistent with whatever are the student achievement results on any standardized test that we put in front of them. So we're extremely excited at looking at the results that students are taking on assessments that we give them and making sure that that influences future teachings so that our teachers can help our students um, become far better. Teachers received, um, in addition, um, we have a strategic plan that ends in June of 2019. It has four priorities, 17 strategies, 64 indicators, and two weeks ago, we shared with the community at the business meeting that there were 254 touch points where we addressed in uh, the start of this school year, from actually July until present, 254 times that we actually made decisions at this table with regards to the current strategic plan in the instance of making sure that we are, are and were sticking true to the precepts that were outlined years ago. There were two grants that we gave our staff to do. I believe in you grant and the I believe in my professional learning community grant. I'm extremely excited to announce that we awarded 29 um, I believe in you grants across our schools impacting 1,608 students for a total of $48,000. This is money that went to individual teachers to impact instruction in their respective classrooms. That's really good. On the same note, the in, I believe in my PLC grant, there were 32 qualifying schools. That was 32 teams of teachers across our school district impacting 4,278 students with a total of $251,000 going into the hands of classroom uh, teachers. Last two points that I would want to share um, with you is that I announced on the 28th of August that uh, we would be reinstating attendance counselors. Um, there are five important uh, legal matters that occurred prior to July 1 that um, create not a roadblock, but delays. One of them dealt with the uh, Civil Service Commission in particular. So I'm extremely excited to announce that all of the attendance counselors that have rights to the positions that were eliminated a number of years ago, um, that they have a window of time 
to actually apply, and that window of time ended yesterday, as well as the fact that any candidates that were interested in applying, uh, obviously that, that application is out in the open and that we will be conducting interviews. And the objective is to report in November that we either have hired or have hired attendance counselors across our schools, and we are extremely excited about doing that. Uh, last item. On the park assessment, uh, students are required to um, take the assessment actually online. Um, there is a paper, paper version of the same. But the purpose of the um, technology was not to um, utilize it on the day of a test, but to actually have computer technology in their hands at all times. Um, we have a couple of new schools, three of them, Elliott, Oliver, South Street, and all of those three schools have a one-to-one -one ratio of computer technology to student. That's how those schools were designed. That's not how other new schools were designed years ago. I just want to make that clear to everyone. But currently, right now, we have 38 schools that will be placing orders for a one-to-one -one ratio of of Chromebooks to students by this December is the objective. So that every student in every single one of our schools, this is an approximate expenditure of a little over $2 million where we will actually put money and provide it into the hands of teachers. We will take dollars and purchase equipment so that we actually have computers in front of every single child in every single school, regardless of what ward they're actually in. And ladies and gentlemen, and to this board in particular, this is just one example of many examples where this administration will continue to model that the best way that we spend dollars is closest to the children in our schools. And Madam President, that ends uh, this um, part of the superintendent's report with one important announcement. I just want to take this opportunity um, to um, thank uh, Mr. Gregory for the incredible work that he has um, done in this school district. Uh, take this opportunity uh, to wish him well in his uh, endeavors as the superintendent of Marion P. Charter Schools and wish him nothing but great success and know that we are here not only to wish him well, but to make sure that he is successful. And Madam President, that ends this report. Thank you, Superintendent Leon. Now we will move on to public participation. Public participation at a public board meeting will be limited to 90 minutes. This time allotment may be extended for an additional 15 minutes by the board chair at, his or at her discretion. All speakers, regardless of whether he or she represent an organization, will be allotted no more than three minutes for comment unless an exception applies. It shall be the responsibility of the board chair to maintain order and efficient process during public participation at board meetings, especially so that the full time allotment for public comment is given over to the speakers from the public. Time limits for all speakers will be adhered to. There will be no sharing or granting of speaking time to others. Speakers must be present when their name is called. All speakers will be required to give their names and addresses. The public participation portion of the meeting will be limited to one hour and 30 minutes. Examples of unacceptable behavior that will not be permitted include, but are not limited to, naming district employees and engaging in personal attacks, racial slurs, excessive loudness, calling out, yelling, generally disruptive behavior, attempting to disrupt the meeting or inciting others to do so. Public participation at board meetings is intended to allow individual members of the public the opportunity to address the board and administration on issues of public concern and not as a forum for two-way dialogue with board members. The superintendent or designee or the board chair may respond to questions either at the end of the public participation session or responses may be provided at a later time. The superintendent or board chair may interrupt any speaker or terminate any individual speaking privilege if the speaker's comments are disruptive or obscene. 
an individual may be cautioned that a personally directed statement may be slanderous or defaming and that the individual may be liable for his or her statements. Attempts to hijack or filibuster the proceedings, repeated interrupting or badgering the board chair or district officials, repetitive or truculent speech, or other disregard for the rules of decorum will not be tolerated and may subject the individual or group to removal from the meeting. If necessary, the meeting will be adjourned. Yes. We have the speakers list and the first speaker will be Malcolm White Walker, student. Okay, Malcolm. Malcolm, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name <clears throat> My name is Malcolm White Walker, and I live on 784 Clinton Avenue. And uh, what I want to what I want to speak on today is what happened at school. Something that happened at school was what happened on October 24, 2018. Um, my teeth while I was walking out of school, somebody had to pass me a toy that was like a toy gun, and I was playing around with it, and I made like I said something that that I wasn't even trying to scare anybody, but I said something, and uh, a parent heard me say with the toy gun, and also the parent saw told my uh, well my after school math teacher and my principal. My principal took it too far because she had. Took it. She uh, took it as it was a real gun. She, 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 she tried to do a lot of like. She tried to think. She she thought it was something real, so I can get in trouble. And also, uh, also what, uh, like it was it it wasn't real. So I don't know why she was thinking so much as it was a real gun, and she wanted to like. It it wasn't it wasn't something that I was into. I was into playing with it, and she was into thinking that it was real. And I I don't I don't want that to happen again. I'm not gonna do it again. But also I don't want her to do it to me. But she also did it to other students. So uh, also thank you for uh, thank you for letting me speak. And every God bless you, and everyone have a great day. Malcolm, you can stay at the microphone. That's not important. So I want to thank you for taking the opportunity to um, speak with us. And we're going to have a special conversation about what occurred. You and I, your mom, was extremely important for you to understand is that anyone who's watching this needs to understand that we have to, in our schools, take things very, very seriously, even though we know today that you weren't trying to hurt anybody. And I know you're a good kid, okay? Yes. So we will have that conversation. And we'll make sure that things like this not only not happen with you, but not happen with any of the other students in this school district. Okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Speaker number two, Jay Arena. Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Jay Arena. Uh, I am the Jobs and Equal Rights for All candidate for Essex County Executive. Uh, and I am here to request from the Newark School Board and from the Superintendent really to demand that the Newark School Board join other local governments in New Jersey in passing a resolution mm -hmm. that uh, the Essex County uh, government and uh, County Executive Joseph DiVincenzo immediately and permanently uh, close the 800-person ICE jail uh, that they run here in Newark, in fact, right here in the Iron Blonde, blocks away from Newark Public Schools. 
Um, and he runs this. This is run for Donald uh, Trump. Now, there are many reasons that you should be taking a stand to demand its closure. It's a social justice issue. It's a worker issue. But it's also an education issue. I'm a member of the Newark Education Workers, which board member Aliyah Owens helped found. I'm a very proud member. And they are, like to say that the working conditions of education workers are the learning conditions of our students. But I would add that the living conditions beyond the walls of the schools are also the learning conditions of our children because they permeate those walls. And when we have the existence of this, of this ICE, we call it a concentration camp because people are being held uh, without criminal charge or trial. Uh, in, the, in the county, Joe D, we call him deportation. Joe makes blood money from this. It brings in about three million a year, 36, 33 million a month, 36 million a year. But with well, this exists, which terrorizes the families of Newark public school students. And in fact, Essex County, there's just been a report out by Syracuse University that Essex County has one of the highest number of arrests by ICE in the whole country. And so obviously, this terrorizing of the community, overseen by Joseph DiVincenzo, sadly a graduate of Newark Public Schools, formerly a school teacher, and yet he oversees uh, this, this, uh, this outrage, this ICE concentration camp that negatively impacts uh, our families and the learning conditions of our, of our students. So I think it's very incumbent, I know I have 30 seconds left, I could go, there's a lot of whereases on why this resolution should pass. And I'm ready to work with the board to get this done. Uh, but we're going to keep coming back until it happens. But uh, this is very incumbent um, uh, on, on the board to do this. And, and just and here, the superintendent talked about we measure success on how we treat the most vulnerable, talking about the school for the deaf. Well, I think that should also extend to when we're looking at the immigrants that are under attack uh, by by Trump and his collaborator, Joseph Devin. Your Gentile. time is up, Mr. Arena. Thank you very up. much. Yeah, but the, the ICE attacks are not up, and it's incumbent upon you. You guys have been silent, and it's time for you to stand up, and the, the request has been made. Next speaker, Darren Martin. Christopher Kanick, next speaker. Hi, my name is Christopher Kanick. I reside at 155 Berkeley Avenue in Bloomfield. Uh, I'm here tonight uh, to talk more or less about what I talk about every time I come here, which is special needs students. Uh, as well as tonight uh, features some of the words of not only special needs students, but general education students. Uh, I task students with extra activities in my math class because I know that in a class, or a school I should say, where 30% of the students are special needs, I need to develop special relationships with children. Um, in order to engage the highest need populations, be them emotionally disturbed, behaviorally disturbed, uh, OHI, CI, et cetera, uh, acronyms that if you're not familiar uh, at the uh, legal level, you should become familiar. Certainly the board knows all of those acronyms. Um, in order to engage those students, you have to be prepared to put yourself emotionally on the line. Uh, sometimes that means crying in front of students so that they know that a man can cry. Sometimes it means embracing them even though we're supposed to be as hands-off as possible, but a kid needs a hug sometimes, too. I'm going to read some of the words of students uh, from my classroom. Uh, once, once per week, uh, or sometimes once every two weeks, I give students an opportunity to promote restorative practices in the classroom, where we talk about and discuss what it means to be a person, what it means to live in the current society, and where we talk about what it means to be a part of our classroom and what our goals are. One student wrote, my goal is to become a better me. 
I also want to keep my GPA over a 3.5 for my last three years of high school so I can receive either an academic or sports scholarship. What I really want for myself is to become either a professional basketball player or to go to school to be an architect. But I feel as though I'm trying, but I'm not giving it my all. I also want to inspire my younger siblings that if you push and give it your all, God will bless you. I also want to not just make my parents, but my family proud. I just can't wait to see how many, uh, or how my mother reacts when she sees uh, that I've received a basketball or academic scholarship. He writes, dear family, I will make you proud, and that's a must. Another student writes, my goal is to leave high school and to get a job, move my mom and dad out of New Jersey into a nice house, give them everything they want. I just want to see them happy. And given that my time is almost up, I remind you that my goal is to see special needs and general education students in this district happy. And we have a long way to go before at least one of those groups is satisfied. Thank you very much, Mr. Kanick. Speaker number five, Viva White. Please state your name and address for the record. Viva White, 784 Clinton Avenue. I forgot my address. I started to say 765 Royal Street because I think I paid rent there too. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm here to speak about community schools. Uh, my son attends Belmont Runyon Community School, and I know that is not the only community school. However, I said I, last month I would come up here like a broken record because I can see this is the second year. Mr. Leon, we do not have a lead agency. Part of the community school model is to have a lead agency. We need one. We only had one the first year, which was 2016 to 17. Because um, 17 to 18, we didn't have it, and now it's 18 to 19. <coughs> I also want to stress the importance of the principal and the faculty and the staff and everyone involved there needs to have training in the community school model. It is a transparent and inclusive model. It's not exclusive. I sent her an email about some issues and she said, my staff and I are working on it. The community school model is not one that looks at me and my staff. It looks at everyone as part of that community and we do it together. Also, part of that model is having restorative justices practices implemented in that. And there, there is a lot of work, and I do believe um, it was reported to me, I was not at that meeting where I heard it firsthand, that the academic level is the lowest in the district. And I wholeheartedly believe without any doubts in my mind that if we fully implement this community school model as it is supposed to be done, we can totally change that around. But we have to do it. It has, it's a bottom-up type. It's, it's not a bureaucracy or a hierarchical, even though we know we have someone there that may, can make an executive decision. But we have to fully implement this model. I don't know what happened to the money. I know North Trust for Education has a fiduciary responsibility, but I really would like to know what happened to the money. I do know as a resource you can call the Children's Aid Society in New York City, to come do some training, and they need to do it for everybody. When they have meetings around community school, the parents need to be invited to that meeting because we are part of that community for that school. It doesn't need to be hand-picked. It could be put out to everyone, and then we register to come because we all must be on the same page. It's an inclusive model, not an exclusive one. So I'm going to come up here every month, y'all going to hear it from me, and then I might take some time out and start coming to the business meetings too, because we really need to implement this community school model. I believe it needs to be all over North Public School District, but I know that Belmont Runyon is one of those schools where it's designated as a community school. Ms. White, thank yes. you for speaking. Can you please just leave your phone number with Ms. Deering? Yes. Thank you. We're going to move on to the next speaker, speaker number six, Denise Cole. Madam Chair, <laughs> Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I'm here for the record, so you know. What happened? Who was it? Denise Cole. 
Well, I signed up to speak tonight, and I haven't seen you in a long time, Roger, but I did leave you a message because you gave me a number that you never pick up on. So maybe I have the wrong number and we need to exchange numbers. But um, what I was going to speak about, the board did address about the referendum on the ballot where we want to uh, appoint it or elected school board. I'm glad that you gave a report that you're now doing civics in the school. That's one of the things that as leaders we've been talking about doing civics in our school. My greatest concern with this board right now is that, you know, y'all spend more time giving each other accolades about where you've been and what you did and, you know, pictures being taken. But I don't hear this board or the chair or the vice chair speak about what you've implemented in the school systems that is changing our ELL students, um, English language learners, students, so that they're coming on board with moving up in the park scores. I don't hear any of you promoting what we've done to change the curriculum so our 66 schools have tutors in it or identifying what children need help to improve. Roger, your report was excellent. I thought it was the state of the North Public School report, but we need to know from September to now, how is our 66 schools doing? What are our children doing in the classrooms? Because I'm glad that um, sports-wise, they're doing well, but where are they academically? What are we doing academically for our student success? And I want to commend Ms. Gaddy on her environmental fight. I loved your video that you did, but I need some videos done on how we're improving in the school district. I know, Ms. Norton, you work for um, um, a charter school, but I need you to work for Newark Public School System. I need you guys to start implementing videos that tell us what are we doing in our school systems so that our children are on point? Because right now, we're not. And we're not even on point. I know he said we're absenteeism, but if we look at the absentee record, we're not. Because I still have parents complaining to me about the one Newark and how their kids are. I have a niece. She got to take one child over here, and then she got to drive all the way to Belmont Runyon with a second child. And it depends on the traffic of the day, do she get the second child to school on time? And then when she do get the child to school on time, the school have an issue. But it's not really her fault that the kids aren't getting on time because she's leaving out early enough to do it. But sometimes traffic is horrendous. And, and when they was doing that movie downtown Broad Street, y'all had streets closed that the community didn't know about. So there's a lot of hurdles that our families have to go through. But we need this board to stop giving yourself accolades and start giving us accolades about how our children are improving and what you actually done to improve the curriculum and our children test scores. Thank you. Sorry, Madam President. Yes. Just real quickly. Um, part of what we are, are trying to model is not to, you know, answer every uh, speaker, but I just do want to take this opportunity because the issue um, has been raised that if for some reason um, you do not uh, attend a meeting where information was provided for you that we could redirect you to a couple of places. One uh, is to the district's web where all of the minutes you know, should be there. I will make exerted efforts to make sure that they are there, that they're there in a timely fashion. But the one thing that I will not allow people to come to the microphone and say is that we're not being transparent with all of our data. Mm -hmm at the business meeting that just only happened two weeks ago, this board was inundated with data as to every single student school's attendance, and we have that information by child, as well as the performance of students on the one test that we believe will um, develop uh, opportunities for our teachers to service children better. So I do think that the reality is the reality, our student achievement is nowhere near where it needs to be, that there are many, many hurdles that we will need to overcome to get us to a place where I will say I am confident that children are learning in every single school at the level that we expect of every single child and of every school to perform. Ultimately, that is where we're going and we are creating a pathway to get there. 
Well, I didn't come to the mic and say you didn't give that information. What you Thank you, Superintendent Leon. We're going to move on to the next the speaker. To make that speaker number seven, to Diane Galloso, if you can please get up and come to the podium. Thank you very much. In order for that to happen. Ms. Cole, so thank you, you. When you speak towards what I speak about, make sure you're speaking correctly. I said give solutions for those issues that you pointed out. I never said you weren't being transparent. Ms. But Cole. you sit up there and you give accolades to everybody for what they do and what they show up for, but we don't get accolades on what are we actually doing for an IEP for each child, an individual learning child plan for each child to succeed. Because we have children now whose parents are having a problem academically in each and every one of our schools, and there is no plan in place for them. Special Ms. Cole, and the other speakers are waiting to speak, please. Okay, but you Thank know what? You. When you this is a conversation you and the superintendent can have at a later you time. you a statement about me, you know I'm going to address it. Thank okay? you, Ms. Cole. So I addressed it. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Ms. Galloso? Good evening, Diane Gayoso, 60 Park Place, and proud parent of a Science Park Charger. Um, once again, I'm advocating for the crisis going on in our high schools since the suicide attempts started occurring last school year, which is being ignored by all except a few sitting on that stage tonight. I have some statistics that hopefully will wake up uh, everyone within that's listening to me tonight. A national research shows that 10, 10 to 40% of adolescents harm themselves either by cutting or burning their skin, yet it's being ignored. According to the article in youth.gov, suicide is the second leading cause of death among youth ages 15 to 24 nationwide, yet it's being ignored. According to the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention, Suicide is the fourth leading cause of death in youth, in people ages 25 to 54, and an even more alarming number is that suicide is New Jersey's third cause of death in youth ages 15 to 24, and once again, it's being ignored. I know some may say to themselves, oh Lord, here she comes again, once, you, uh, once they find out, that I'm going to speak at a meeting. And frankly, it, it really doesn't matter to me because I will continue to advocate until everyone makes a difference in our high schools with the, with the people that want to work with the board. I also stated that some, some people say that things are going on, meetings are being held, but no one is giving any information, any updates on, on those situations. The public needs to know, and I'm sure that if, if, if you had family members going through similar situations, you'd take every available resource out there. Why can't the same thing be done for our youth, district-wide? After all, everyone up there was elected for, that, for, the re, for the same reason, our children. Before I leave tonight, I have one question to ask. I have several questions to ask. Uh, those of you that are afraid of the word suicide, will a parent, will a student have to spill their blood in a building and a life be lost in front of teachers, friends, and everyone else for the rest, and be traumatized for the rest of the li their lives so action can be taken? Can, can, those of you up there uh, for notoriety, uh, do something before it's too late, because God forbid, if something tragic like that does happen, rest assured, I will be up here reminding you of this conversation. I know my time is up. I will be uh, reminding everyone of this conversation. Of Every time I speak before the board, our kids are crying out for help. They're, attempting suicide and no one's doing anything about it. There are people that want to work with the board. They, they have plenty of information, okay? Mm -hmm. And no one's approaching anybody. 
Thank you, Ms. Gallo. So I think uh, something was set up be for Ms. Granado to reach out to you. I think you can have a sidebar after you're speaking now with Ms. Gr Granado. We're looking into behavioral uh, services and management for students. We need our teachers to identify those students. So I'm gonna stop it there so you can speak with Ms. Granado and we can have the next speaker come up. You're not being, you're, you are not being ignored. Okay, don't feel that Honestly, way. I know it's hard. It feels that it does because okay. yes, on the side, mm -hmm. yes. It is being, but mm -hmm. I need interaction from the board. Right. We elected you. Absolutely. We want to work mm -hmm. with you. We know mm -hmm. we can, as a team, everybody, mm -hmm. the community. Well, we can't do this dialogue back and forth once you're done speaking, but if you leave your phone number with Ms. Nancy, I have spoke, I spoke to you last month and told you who I was in contact with at a behavioral need, hospital institution, all, all but I these hear. conversations have to begin we have to crawl before we can walk, walk before we can run, and it's happening. You know, it's it's an epidemic, like I told you last month. It's not an isolated Christ. situation, so we are addressing your concern. So if you can now just speak with Ms. Granado and let the next speaker come up. Thank you, Ms. Galloso. What's his last Ibayang. name? Ibayang. Thomas Ibayang. That's not what she wants. Not a, he's appearing? No, not appearing. Next speaker, Roberto Cabañas. Next speaker, Vanessa Roper. Next speaker, Linda Lloyd. Next speaker, Cassandra Dock. Next speaker, Donald Jackson. Next speaker, Donna Jackson. Donna Jackson, 128 Smith Street. Glad to hear you say that suicide is an epidemic. Just need to know what we're going to do. It's been years and years and years. I don't care how long you've been on that board, it's been an issue as parents, as community. It's unacceptable that we don't have something in place already. Unacceptable. Should have came in the door with that. So, you know, return to local control, what does that mean? Probably absolutely nothing. Your principals are still up to their same shenanigans. Here we got the principal at Brick Avon giving the parent a letter that she said is a legal form saying that she's banned from the building. We're not going to start this shenanigans again. We are not. So don't worry, I'll be at Peshawn rallying on my live with my million viewers and I'll take it to the streets since you guys don't seem to want to handle it. How do you tell a parent that there was an issue in September, then her daughter has an incident on September the 24th, of a harmful nature, and then because she caused institutional abuse on you because you didn't do what you were supposed to do, and they arrive at the school on Friday, then Monday you want to hand to this? We're not doing that. We're not doing that. And I will call every administrator out that's doing it. So let me slide on over to Abington with they little racist behinds over there. We're going to stop the shenanigans too in the, in the North Ward. Guess I got to go over there and do a rally too. Because I guess nobody don't want to call nobody together to stop this stuff that's been going on for years. Because it didn't just start. So it ain't your fault. But y'all know what's going on. So we're not going to sit around and act like this not going on. And the assistant superintendent's not going to make it worse. Now, when everybody got promoted, Donna wasn't clapping for everybody. Because I know everybody can't do the job. And the person over the North Ward can't handle the job. He couldn't handle it as principal over at Chancellor. Thus, we had to hire him a principal assistant at $98,000 a year to be in the building with our children because he didn't want to be over there. So if he didn't want to be over there, then he don't want to be over the kids over there. So we are not going to continue to have assistant superintendents and principals abusing parents 
because they're talking about their children being bullied and they want resolution. So this parent has a state complaint, she got a federal complaint, she got a complaint downtown, she followed all the HIPAA per, uh, paperwork, and now we done got a group of kids to gang up on this child and use the N-word because most of the children in the classroom are Hispanic. So we're not going to keep doing this. And I'm the right one to start the black Latino revolution because I got enough Latino friends and enough black friends to get it straightened out since the rest of y'all can't seem to do it. Because we'll remove the anebas and the razzes out of the way and we'll handle it on the street level. Because we are not going to continue to allow this abuse. I know I only got 20 more seconds. Don't worry, Ms. Garcia. And I'm going to get off of here because I understand. But y'all better do something about it. There is a black Latino problem in this district and y'all better fix it and y'all better fix it and you ain't trying to fix it. And these abusive principles, you better get them. You can make all the faces you want. Ain't gonna stop me from coming, and ain't gonna stop from the fact that you guys are not doing what you need to do. And Miss Hayes, with the post you had, you need to fix that face with your ethics violation. Yeah, don't play with me. Thank you very much, Miss Jackson. Next speaker, Belinda Jackson. Belinda Jackson not appearing. Next speaker, Shonda Parker. Next speaker, Kathleen Witcher. Not appearing. Next speaker, Johnny Latner. He is 18. Yes, Johnny Latner, 6068 uh, Pleasant Avenue. So, um, I need to talk in reference to the situation that I brought up last month in reference to Aberdeen Avenue School. <clears throat> um, first of all, I saw that y'all passed a resolution in reference to bullying and all of that. People are not following that rule. Um, as Donna said, there's a serious situation there. Um, Mr. Leon, I brought it to your attention last month. You took the lady, or supposed to got the lady's number, supposed to call the lady. She haven't received the call. Um, I really don't want to go deep into the situation, but she needs to meet with you because it's very serious. As Donna said, her child was said, nigger, you do not belong here, and you need to go kill yourself. Yeah. That's serious. That is serious. We came down to your office. We wanted to meet with you. She went through the protocol. It's serious. I don't stand up here just to say, hi, how you doing? This is serious. This lady is calling me every night because they are constantly, constantly, constantly harassing her and her, and her son. And he has an IEP. It's serious. I mean, that's all. I, I don't even have to say anymore. And the social superintendent you put over that, who met with her, we need to really have a, she needs to meet with you because she needs to tell you the story. Because I can come up here and say it, but it is very serious. And board members, I will, we will forward your email because it's serious. I don't come up here and just cheerlead. I don't do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Latino. I truly appreciate it. The matter will definitely be looked into. Next speaker, Jalisa Vesquez. Not a parent. Myra Lawson. I'm almost short as well. Okay. I'm sorry. Good evening, Mr. Leon, uh, board members, and community. Um, I'm Myra Lawson, 
I have an office at 279 Chancellor Avenue, Wink Wake High School Alumni Association, where I'm the executive director. I'm here today because I wanted to publicly acknowledge and articulate our gratitude to some of the people who have worked at our school for the betterment of its scholars and employees. Um, as you may know, we were doing a brick, excuse me, a brick scholarship fundraiser for the last six years. Um, recently, we were able to sell enough bricks to have them installed in the front walkway at the high school. So first, I would like to thank the NPS facilities department for all of their hard work installing these bricks. Um, in particular, I'd like to take a moment to thank Mr. Peter Massu, Mr. Wayne Bowler, and his staff, and Ms. Valerie Wilson, who moved the project along. Second, I would like to acknowledge the time and energy that the NPS maintenance staff put into preparing the school for each school year. Over the summer, they scrub, they sanitize all the classrooms and all the other spaces to ensure that the students come back to a clean and safe environment. Last month, a number of volunteers from Wells Fargo Bank, along with alumni staff and members of the community, came to Weekwake for a day of service. They painted, they put up murals, they purchased and assembled new furniture for the school, which we sorely needed. Preparing the school for this day required several days of hard and dirty work to remove old shelving and years of, ac of accumulated paper and books. We are extremely appreciative of everything that they do. They are more than just staff. They are stakeholders in the success of not only Week Wake, but every public school in this great city of Newark. And I just wanted to say thank you to them in a public place to know how much they're appreciated. As an aside, before I sit down, we could still use some doorbells. We could also use the media and a technology coordinator, so I'm gonna follow up on that separately. But again, um, I'm just here tonight to publicly thank the uh, Newark Public Schools Facility Department and all the work that they do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. Next speaker, Ms. Sharon Shirek. Not a parent. Gary Westbury. Uh, my name is Gary Westbury. My address is Weekwick High School, 279 Chancellor Avenue, North New Jersey. I come to, uh, well, first let me uh, greet Superintendent Leon and the board members. I come to you tonight uh, asking for your permission to allow the Week Wake High School Athletic Department to live stream all of their athletic events, number one. Number two, to have our camera system to be installed into the physical plant at Week Wake High School. Um, these monies that we secure from the proceeds from our athletic event will go directly into our athletic department uh, because over the years we have had a lack of funding to really supply our athletic department, but we are stepping up to try to take care of those lack of funding ourselves. So I just need your approval and I have all uh, the plans for executing the installment of the camera system. Thank you. Is it possible for you to leave a copy of that with board relations with Ms. Daring so that the board can review it? Next speaker, Gregory Prince. Gregory Prince, 24 Academy Road, Norwich, Vermont, 05055. I'm senior advisor to Pathways to College, and Pathways wanted to speak through me to the board to share with you some information as to why Pathways believes so strongly in the Newark students and why we've worked in Newark for over 20 years. We are prompted to speak because of the report that has come out, the College Outcomes oh. Report that the Rutgers University and the NCLC has put out. We are very excited that the conversation in Newark is shifting or expanding 
from issues of park and test scores and college readiness to actual college outcomes that is moving in the direction that the superintendent has to our, and we're very excited about, taking a focus from cradle actually to career, the whole spectrum. <clears throat> we attended one of the outcome uh, community discussions with the West, in the West Ward. And we were struck by the major concern that the community had with the results of that study, and particularly chart figure 18, page 27, which shows that approximately one-third of the comprehensive school students receive college degrees relative in percentage terms from those of the charters, the magnets, KIPP, and so forth. There was real concern, and we were concerned too, because we believe that for Newark to make progress, the comprehensives are going to have to be seen as competitive with and comparable to the magnets and charters. And in that meeting, I made a comment that I really wanted to share here. We believe there is no question that there is just as much potential in those comprehensive high schools, that they can do it just as easily, that there is just as much capability. And we can make that statement because of the chart that I think is in front of you now, and that I have copies for the community if they wish it. You can see that Pathways has worked in a group of comprehensive high schools and we only work four hours a week, but those students have performed at the same level as St. Benedict, Benedict's, the um, KIPP, and the Magnets. The potential is there. People ask, how do we do it with those students? And we do it in part because we've had the support over the years, 20 years, in critical moments, Roger Leon, the superintendent, Mario Santos has kept us in East Side the longest of any uh, comprehensive high school. We've had their support. We've had support from foundations and other places. Many of the found Victoria, Turl, Dodge, Bank of America. But we ultimately do, do it. We're ultimately able to do it because we don't do it. The students do it. The comprehensive students have as much potential and they have performed and can perform at the same level. And I hope we'll have a chance to keep working with you to make that possible as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Next speaker, Lyndon Brown. Good evening, Lyndon Brown, 220 South 6th Street, Newark. Uh, first, I just want to give kudos to all of the teachers, staff, students, and parents who participated in the 2018 Breast Cancer Walk uh, last Sunday. I, I was there, and I was so proud to see so many Newark Public School families um, in attendance and supporting that effort. Um, I also want to uh, commend the district on a wonderful college fair last week. I was in attendance. I met 1,500 wonderful, promising teens, and I, I look forward to uh, the next college fair for our juniors in the spring. Um, I also want to talk tonight about the, um, I, I, I want to commend the, the board for opening a meeting tonight with a moment of silence for the, uh, those who've been impacted by violence across the country. My concern tonight is the violence that is occurring right here in our own city. Last week, there were some very disturbing acts of violence in many of our schools. I drove past uh, Barringer High School on Friday afternoon. There was such a horrific melee in the street, and the student was running from his schoolmates who were trying to assault him, and he was running through the street, and cars were coming left and right, and the sheriff's department was there, and New York, uh, public school security was on point, the New York police department, but there have been so many incidents of violence occurring just in the past week in some of our schools that it speaks to the need for interventions, social, social and emotional supports for our students, um, maybe some behavior modification, a training for our staff, support staff and our teachers because um, the weather's gonna be changed, the holidays are coming up, and our students need to make sure that when they come to school, it is in a uh, stress-free, violent-free environment. I also want to speak about special needs uh, concerns. We have a lot of students who are still exhibiting um, behavioral problems who need to be classified. I spoke to some teachers at Weekway who were very distressed that they've received a lot of students from Cleveland uh, Elementary School this uh, fall who were very low functioning and exhibiting a lot of behavioral problems. So we need to make sure that our social supports and our interventions are there for our students 
at the elementary school level. They should not be coming to high school uh, on a second and third grade math and reading level and expecting those high schools to work wonders. It is unfair to them. And I also want to say um, we need to uh, start thinking about um, addressing the, the names of our schools. It, Lewis A. Spencer is named after a prominent Newarker, and someone's changing their name to a Spencer Miller. That needs to be looked at because um, people are confused as to what the actual name of the school is. If you take 15th Avenue School and move it to South 17th Street, you should not still be calling it 15th Avenue. Maybe think about renaming the school. You move Speedway Avenue School to South Orange Avenue. Why are we, we need to think about changing that name because people are confused. They're going to Speedway looking for that school to be on that street, and it's not there. 13th Avenue slash MLK Renewed School, what is that? You have one name on the website, one name going home to the parents on stationery, and then the parents are confused. We need to get some clarity on the real names of our schools, and our superintendents and assistant superintendents need to make sure that our principals are using the proper legal names for our schools. Thank you. Have a good night. Mr. Brown, Madam Chair. Board Member Owens. Thank you. Just quickly, I, I, I apologize. I meant to say something earlier. Uh, Mr. Brown, where are you going? Come back. <laughs> um, I just wanted to take a mo moment quickly to acknowledge the fact that earlier this month, uh, Mr. Lyndon Brown was um, acknowledged by the Newark branch of the NAACP and awarded um, an honor in education. Um, so I was very proud to be there in support of him and the other honorees. Um, being a member of the Newark branch, and I, and I just wanted to take the time in the public meeting, so that's on TV, uh, whenever these mm -hmm. get back on TV, um, to acknowledge that and to, to thank you for your advocacy and just to let you know that you are you know, one of the models and mentors of mine, one of the reasons why I'm here on this board today, and you really you know, paved the path to allow me to understand what it means to be a staunch advocate to bring the real news and, and to follow up and make sure that everything is done right by our children. So I just wanted to publicly acknowledge and thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Brown. Next speaker, Wilhelmina Holder. Wilhelmina Holder, 765 Broad Street, Newark, New Jersey, 07102. Ah, or three, whatever it is. Um, first, I want to say, I think we should take a moment of silence uh, uh, for the violence that was uh, enacted upon the two Afro-American, the grandfather and the woman that was killed in Louisville. I heard you say about Pittsburgh, but I did not hear you mention that. Did you mention that or did I miss that? That was the same weekend. I mentioned Pittsburgh and I mentioned the one that occurred in North Carolina, the young man that was shot at the school yesterday. Okay, but you didn't mm -hmm. mention in Louisville, there were two African no, did not. killed by a racist in Louisville, African American parents. One was a grandfather, age 66, and then a mother um, shot in a grocery store by a racist. Mm -hmm. So that, um, if you would take that in consideration as well, Absolutely. all in 72 hours. Mm -hmm. um, we had some heinous acts committed. Also, um, I want to also mention my colleague and partner in Christ and Crime, Lyndon Brown was also inducted in the West Side Hall of Fame. Woo! <laughs> well, I'm not mentioning me, Mr. Brown. We're talking about you right now. <laughs> um, and um, I want to thank the superintendent also for pushing and helping us with the civic engagement. I am a Newark um, trustee a civic trustee, and I am so thrilled and excited that this is taking place in our schools, of our, our um, teachers, as well as our youngsters. This is how we engage them in the conversations we're having today. And I want to thank Superintendent Leon for um, creating a pathway for that to occur. I think if we are strategic, we're going to see some changes in terms of reduction in violence and and moral support and also self-esteem when children are engaged in their lives. Um, the question I do have of the board is of opportunities. Um, I don't know if you know, but Public Service Electric and Gas and other companies that we spoke to are talking about future green jobs. Are we, prepared? Are we preparing the children? Um, because the other issue in talking to members of the higher ed community is not just about coding, but it's about those soft skills that should be incorporated in the curriculum. I know we do role playing at the library, and I'm going to tell you something. We're in trouble with communications. Children is not having professional email, professional appearance, 
Um, and I think these things should be reiterated daily on a daily basis in the schools. Um, the other thing, if we're talking about student outcomes in terms of college and career readiness, we need to talk about our resources or the lack thereof. Is there equity? I look at Abington Avenue and Ann Street and I say, wow, how did they get some of the highest performing teachers? And you send people to 13th Avenue that's not quite there. Who's doing that? Who's in charge of that? We need to look at that because that creates inequity. And we cannot have two systems. We're either going to do this thing together and, and we're going to make sure we support our children. And we need to um, stop using Relay University if we're still using that. Because I, I know I'm biased because my family are traditional educators and administrators and superintendents because they went to traditional schools of education. Montclair State, College of St. Elizabeth, Holder. et cetera, et cetera. We need to look at what's happening in that classroom. If you want to talk about Ann Street or Abington Avenue or 13th Avenue, who's teaching our children? What kind of experience do they have? Ms. What Holder, cultural your time background? Is up. It may be indeed, but a lot of people didn't show up. So I just want to take a second to say, please help us do our homework. Next speaker, and do the research. Jasmine Hardin. Thank you. And I need an answer from the board at some point. Jasmine Hardin. Good evening. My name is Jasmine Hardin. My address is the North Municipal Court, 31 Green Street. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you about the North Youth Court program, which is an after-school-based program. Um, it's, it's focused on restorative justice, and many of my um, community partners have mentioned this tonight, about restorative practices that go on in the school. Our program trains high school students to hold hearings for their peers who commit low-level offenses in the community. We've heard many of them tonight, and they are truancy, bullying, harassment, assault, fighting, possession of a weapon, and possession of marijuana. The unique thing about our program is that it is ran by high school students, high school students that go to schools all around the city. They apply to this program, and they play the roles of the judge, the youth advocate, the community advocate, the jury, and the bailiff. It's focused on positive peer pressure and holding your peers accountable for what takes place in the community. When students come to us, instead of being immediately given a consequence and immediately given a punishment, they participate in restorative um, sanctions that could be community service, life skill based workshops, an essay reflection, a letter of apology, and referrals out to mentoring programs and community programs, and also therapeutic services. We are seen as a supportive intervention and we want to be the intervention that takes place before any immediate punishment happens. So on the school level, we do have various partnerships with schools throughout the district, but we want to increase those partnerships and be a service to schools and administration throughout the district. Right now we operate out of the North Municipal Court, so every Tuesday and Thursday hearings take place at 4.30 for families, for students that are referred for low level offenses. Our high school students are trained on the roles of youth court, but also public speaking, how to ask great questions to their peers, active listening, and what it really means to give back to the community. Also, some of our resources are Victim Service Office, which is on Hawthorne Avenue, for services for uh, victims of violent crimes. We also have a clinic for um, adults at the North Municipal Court. This is a community court program called North Community Solutions. So we're able to offer resources to our parents as well that come to our court um, along with their child. So we're here tonight because we really want to bridge the gap and we want to offer our services any way we can throughout the district. Training staff on restorative practices, um, increasing the number of referrals that we get so the number of suspensions will decrease in the city. And to really give students the opportunity and empower them to tell their story and not giving them a punishment but also shaping them to be leaders as we all know that they can be in the community. Uh, Ms. Hardin, Madam President. Mm -hmm. Superintendent uh, Leon. Thank you. I just um, you know, want to thank the work that you all have already done. Um, part of what has occurred during the course of a number of years has been a move away from the district uh, making um, blanket recommendations that everyone did versus allowing schools to opt into opportunities. Um, I know the work that you all are doing, it is very, not only impressive, um, 
it is uh, life altering in a very, very important and positive way. So if you could do me the favor of just handing your contact information to um, Nancy Deering from Board Relations for me, um, we'll be in contact with you. Absolutely, thank you. Ma Madam Chair. Board Member Bledsoe. Um, uh, just for the record, I would like to be a part of that discussion with the superintendent. Next speaker, Lucius Jones. Madam Chair. Board Member Gaddy. That concludes our speaker list, right? I was going to say that next if. Okay. I mean, I want you to say it, then I'll respond. I'm sorry. Huh? That concludes our speakers list. We will move on to the next item. Uh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, Mr. Westbury spoke about some concerns of funding at Weequay High School. And this is the issue that we have been dealing with in this district at least for the three years that I've been here. Um, our budget for all the schools should have enough money for our sports programs um, at our respective schools. We have had numerous conversations, uh, particularly with Weequake and Westside, um, and Shabazz, that it was mainly the high schools um, who complain about not having funding or the proper funding to assist the athletic department. Um, there were many high schools that turned back thousands of dollars last year um, that went unspent, and Weekwe was one of them. So I want to make sure that we are having a conversation early with the principal, the administration of that school, with the athletic director, with the Weekwake Alumni Association, Ms. Lawson, and others to ensure that the money that is allocated for the high schools, in particular Weekway, is, is being utilized properly. Um, and because it is for our children. And so it just bothers me when individuals come before this mic and they're telling us that they don't have the finances nor the resources for our children. And as a board, we allocate the funding and it is approved, the budget is approved. So that is a problem that I'm hoping the superintendent and his staff addresses um, ex, you know, expeditiously. Um, in terms of Ms. Holder with the green jobs, thank you for that. Um, there's, a lot of opportunity for our children to be trained, and that's what I talk about. Uh, we don't have as many plumbers, minority plumbers, particularly African-American um, plumbers anymore. Uh, the city with uh, combined sewer overflow, there are gonna be billions of dollars that is coming through not only the city of Newark, but the state of New Jersey, um, because we have to change some of the infrastructure issues when you think about lead, that is occurring right now in our city, in our homes, and in our school, that is piping that has to be changed. We used to offer those kind of trainings. Um, so we, I know we're working with some of the colleges around that. We talked about solar. And we're talking about solar in this district uh, for years, even prior to me becoming a board member. So there's opportunities there for solar, as well as green energy. Um, it's about energy democracy. Um, and we need to be talking about equity. So any opportunity that our children can be prepared um, in the emerging green economy, um, I'm open for that conversation and I would hope that the superintendent also makes that a priority. Um, but I wanna make sure that it is on our uh, agenda for not only operations committee, but also finance. Madam Chair. Um, there was one more concern I do wanna thank uh, the young lady who spoke about the restorative justice program, um, that was very important. I see the superintendent went over and had a conversation, so I won't speak um, any further to that issue. Thank you. Madam Chair. Board Member Norton. Um, just for the record, I would like the restorative justice to go through the Programs and Instructions Committee um, to be reviewed. Mm -mm. Then. Mm -hmm. So it could go the, through all committees. The board member Gaddy, Superintendent Leon. We, we, are, we uh, appreciate that. The initial step, uh, one of the things that we're trying to establish um, with the chair of 
PNI is obviously, you know, creating what's the proper protocol to follow with regards to that. I just happen to know about this program, and I also happen to know that people are allowed to opt in, which means people were also allowed not to choose it. So, you know, it's a program that we've already adopted in the district, so that was approved already. The purpose of the conversation is to build a relationship with organizations that I meet with everyone, and then I determine who do I recommend to the board. I'm not recommending them to the board. The board has already approved this years ago. We're having a meeting. There are two board members that have asked to join that meeting, and you know, we will then report out. If we um, want to have like a presentation so that members of the board, like NPNI, want to be apprised of what the whole organization is, I don't think it's inappropriate for uh, that to then also happen. Um, you know, to not only give you an update as to what schools were involved in, what schools they used to be involved in. Um, the person who actually originated this entire uh, project is somebody that, when she came to Newark, was somebody that I actually initially met with. And not to say that that automatically determines a validation, but knowing that something works is helping us get ahead of the game. So I, I don't think it's inappropriate to then say you, that P and I would want an update of information or things of that nature. I just wanted to distinguish between the whole idea of um, they're coming before a committee to be adopted because that has already happened. Thank you. Ma Madam Chair. Student, student Rep. Ferreira. Um, so hello, everyone. I just wanted to talk about a couple of things that uh, were discussed in the public participation. Um, and as it all relates to students, I think it's fair for me to talk about as I am a student. Um, and I know that students are typically idealistic. And we, you know, I hope that one day when I come back to Newark Public Schools that I see that everything is sunshine and rainbows and roses. But I do think that some things that we expect, although some things are absurd and you know it can't be solved in one or two days there are certain things that we should take seriously and there are certain things that you know if we did put our right step forward if we did put our best step forward could have been solved earlier and could be solved now for example um i know that some people came up today to talk about um the suicide um uh, issue going on and in our schools, the problem that's going on in our schools as students are stressed out and there are problems going on within our community that we are not discussing. And it's gonna be, I'm not going to hide it, I'm not going to uh, cover it with something. Um, I'm going to speak blatantly out there, it is a problem in our schools. I was there when there was an incident, as our administ administration described it, at my school. I saw the effect that it had on the students. So when people tell me that, oh, it was something that we can't do or it's something that we can't solve, okay, but it's being willing to listen to the person that's coming up because if people are coming up, that it means that there is a problem. They are not blaming anyone. Nobody is here that is not on our side. Everyone is towards the same cause. We care about the students. That is why I'm here and I'm not doing homework right now when I should be actually. But I am here because there is a problem within the district. There are several problems within the district. But if someone comes up and is telling you, look, I'm afraid not enough is being done, it is not a direct toward you. It is to say, look, I am concerned for the safety and well-being of my child. Could you please acknowledge it? It is not looking away. It is not turning your back on things that are being discussed because maybe I don't have the power that the rest of the board members have up here, but I can do what I can, which is looking you straight in the eye and saying, look, I'm listening because I can't do as much, but I know what it feels like to be around that. So when people tell me it's not a concern, you are not telling the truth. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to discuss was uh, the Newark Youth Corps program that was mentioned. It, um, I am involved in Newark Youth Corps. It's a, re a restorative justice program. Uh, it's definitely something that has helped students and I'm glad that Mr. Leon has had a conversation with Ms. Harding um, and that plans uh, for the Newark Youth Corps program could be a possibility within our school system because we all come up here and we talk about truancy being an issue in our schools, schools, uh, kids not reporting to school. And maybe it's because we haven't been tackling the root cause, which is seeing every student's perspective and the reason as to why they're not going to school, the reason as to why they're being suspended, why we have high suspension rates compared to the rest of our, our state. 
Um, the third thing that I wanted to talk about was I wanted to congratulate um, Malcolm White Walker, who was here, but I think he went to bed because, you know, it's tiring. Um, but I did want to congratulate him, and I hope that students are motivated to come up here and talk. Um, I think that it's great when a student comes up here because, again, students have the potential to be leaders. If you think otherwise, I am sorry, you are not on the side of the students because that is who you're supposed to be representing. The people that are here on the side of the students think that we have the voice and should have the voice. And I know, Ms. Garcia, I'm probably talking for a long time, but no, my student report is short. You're absolutely not. That's why you are, you are the advocate for the students. Thank you. Now, and the fourth thing that I wanted to talk about was there are, some, there are many concerns, not some concerns, that are going around in our school buildings. I, for one, at Science Park have seen problems regarding um, the Hispanic and black community in our school, where people... Thank you. Where people are saying racist comments, comments about immigration, comments about skin tone color, when that is not funny, nor should it be played off as if it isn't a concern. There are students around me who are literally crying as they enter the school building as they are concerned that their parents might be deported, that their parents are being oppressed, whether it's institutionally or socially. So when a student comes in to their learning community and says, look, I'm not exactly focused because whether I might be in threat of being deported or my family is in threat of being deported, I don't think it should be looked at to the side. I think it should be looked straight forward and recognizing that there is an issue. Having programs where students can come and talk about their problems, where they're not stressed out alone, and that is the concern, where students do not have the support system to say, look, I am in an uncomfortable situation and I need help. Because why is it that when a student comes up to a guidance counselor and says, look, I'm not feeling right right now, they say, okay, well, you need to put your problems back in order because you need to go back to class. That is not how problems should be resolved. Problems should be resolved in the manner which when I come out of that guidance counselor's office, I might not have a solution because deportation is not something you can solve alone, but it, I definitely feel more comfortable going out into the world knowing that there is someone watching my back, knowing that there is someone who actually cares. And I think that at the end of the day is what matters because if you're here, if the board is here, if anybody is watching right now, or if anybody tomorrow is gonna ask what happened at this meeting because they couldn't be here today, it's because they care about the students. It's not about parents, it's not about anybody else, it's about how the students are feeling when they enter the classroom environment. And if a student is not given the right to say, look, something is going on within my community and I feel not okay about it, they should have the right to come up here and speak. They should have the right to feel acknowledged. So when I see that people are saying, oh, it's not my responsibility to fix what's happening in the district, or I can't do anything about it, it really hurts because nobody is blaming anybody and everybody is on the same side. What's happening is nobody is talking about it. And when we do, it's not a productive discussion. It is, we did what we could, now you guys have to accept it, or we have to accept it. And that's not exactly right at the same time, because I understand that problems like this are difficult to solve. I'm not gonna say that this could have been solved last night, that this could be solved right this minute through some policy or some legislative decision, but at the same time, when I'm looking you in the eye, I hope you look back in my eye and say, I'm listening, because that's all I want. I don't want an answer. I don't want you to say, oh, I have a solution for you. I want you to look me in the eye and tell me that you are listening, that you have acknowledged what I said, and that we from here on can have productive discussions to make our community better, because isn't that what we all want? Thank you. Thank you very much, student rep Fededa. Uh, I just want you to know regarding the immigration piece you spoke about, the district holds some conferences called Know Your Rights. I would like for you to please uh, inform yourself more with this district's website. We have a calendar, a monthly calendar with all of our events regarding if it's immigration, public health, institutional knowledge, and I would like to see your presence at these functions. They're after school. Saturday mornings, evening hours, so it's not gonna interfere with your work schedule at school. We also, uh, when we attended our conference at NJSBA, there's a group called NUYU 2.0. Okay, and they have a great book for teens called The Mindful Teen, Powerful Skills to Help Handle Stress One Moment at a Time. 
and it starts in the classroom. I think you should start a group in your school to help teachers identify students who have these stress issues or mental health issues or issues at home. We were all students at once. So, we, you know, we are not portraying that we do not have, we didn't have the same type of stress coming home, going to school. You know, it's just a different time right now. And we are listening. There's just certain students when an incident occurs, like it occurred here at Eastside High School, when it's a minor, by law, you cannot discuss that student or the incident that occurred on the record. And as a parent of three, I'm gonna tell you now, if that was one of my kids and you shot out that name, I would have a serious problem with that. Exactly. No, I said, if you did, okay? But there, you know, we are taking the measures to assist. So you just, you know, you just arrived. I'm happy you're here, but you know, email us, communicate with your board colleagues as you are our student rep. But um, that's a great group that I met at the conference and I'm gonna connect you with them. Uh, they're based out of East Windsor, New Jersey, and they're willing to come here to Newark, New Jersey and speak to other students. Uh, those are the only two topics that I can recall that you know were really important to you as you were speaking. But um, thank you so much for sharing, okay? Madam, Madam President. Board Member Gaddy. Go ahead, Leah. Thank you. Just, um, is that okay? She's, she's giving me the... It was Gaddy or Owens? Thank you, I appreciate it. So um, I was just going to only say I concur with student rep Ferreira and just leave it at that um, because I found his uh, speech very compelling and very real and very true and what we as adults need to be listening to and as professionals as well in education. So, uh, but then I don't, I just, can't help myself at this moment. I, I don't know, I just found it kind of inappropriate to respond with what he needs to do. Um, I think that he's doing a lot just by the fact that he's able to speak to the issues in the way that, in the manner that he just did. And I think it, it just made a perfect point of what he was saying anyway, about how we're just saying a lot about, we talk a lot about the issues, but we're not really doing a lot about the issues that are most important. Um, so I don't, I'm, and I, I don't mean any disrespect, but I just really felt compelled to say that. So thank you, Student Rep Ferreira. And, and, that, and Madam Chair. Board that, moment, uh, Owens, it's just yes. good to make him aware of what's going on in the district so he can attend and he can share with his peers. Thank you. Madam Chair. Board member I Gaddy. Just, the point that I just wanted to make, I did want to thank Andre Ferreira. I want to thank uh, our, our board colleague for his comments. And the only thing I want to say to you, Andre, is that you are the voice of our students. You are equal just like us. We hear you, we see you, and we're here to support you. So keep doing what you do and never apologize for speaking up about what you feel for students. And if you don't think that we are not supporting you, let us know, because you are what, you're here for a reason, you were elected just like us by your peers, so what you speak about matters. So I just want you to say that, you are one of us. Thank you. Madam Chair. Board Member Gomez. So I just want to thank our student representative, Andre, for that. Um, I just want to let you know that I'm listening and that I will be listening and that, um, you know, I look forward to working with you and um, we will talk next steps um, outside of here uh, because I am the chair of community engagement and I would really, really love it if you could attend one of our committee meetings just to give us that student perspective. Uh, we would really appreciate that. So thank you so much for everything you said and again, uh, please keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Gomez, Superintendent Leon. Yeah, you know, Madam just, Chair. Uh, sorry, I've been, uh, I've been waiting to get the floor all evening. Um, so, so two things I want to address. Um, when I made the comment in reference to the Newark Youth Court, uh, I was asking to be a part of those discussions as, as, as far as where we are um, as a district. Since I've been here, I know that there was a partnership um, but, you know, throughout the reorganization, um, we haven't been given an update. 
Uh, number two, Andre, I do would like to commend you uh, for your comments as well. Um, I hear you. Um, uh, I am a millennial, someone who once was in that classroom 10 years ago, um, and I hear what you're saying and what you're experiencing and what you've expressed is real. And as, as a board member, I'm here to support you in whatever way I can and, and humanly, whichever way humanly possible in my power, from my professional life to sitting on this board, I will be here to support you. So thank you. Superintendent Leon. Sorry. So, um, you know, one of the things that, um, that I want to make really, really clear, not only to you, but, you know, students that are in the audience right now and then those who watch, is that the last thing that I want any student to think is that I think things are great, okay? Because they're not, you know? And it, it includes people here and including the person talking, you know? So one of the things that we do when we're adults is we make mistakes, okay? And then we either continue them, don't learn from them, or if we learn from them, we figure out how to make right and move forward. I'm talking about as adults. So here we have a situation where, and you know how I say you're a kid, but it's with love, right? So here we have a situation, and I want you to understand this, that you're then speaking the truth to things, and that what that does is it puts salt on our wounds, because we're older, and, and we're wrong, and we're flawed. And so all that you're trying to do in your message was to say, hey, we're kids who don't want to be those types of adults. And part of what our job is, is to try and model and be better. And I'll be the first one to say, make mistakes all the time. Made mistakes today. Made mistakes this evening. And so ultimately, the way that we become better is by making less mistakes, apologizing for mistakes, things of that nature, right? And so ultimately, we do a better job of not doing that, and I'm talking about myself. I'm not even talking about anybody on the board. I'm talking about the superintendent of, of schools. Making less mistakes, being a better person, allows me to do a better job for you. And then you become an adult who, whether you become a doctor, or a lawyer, or a superintendent of schools, you become better and then you begin to service young people better because you become an adult who's less wounded, okay? So I applaud you for your comments. I applaud anyone who critiques. I just want people to be informed as to things that we're doing because while we're working really, really hard and understanding that we have a long way to go to get this school district to the place where I know I'm gonna be happy, that we're still making strides against it. So I don't wanna deny that we're moving because we are, but I also wanna be real, we're nowhere near where we are supposed to be and the you know reality check that you provided was really, really nice. Um, especially for me uh, this evening. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next item, finance and operations. We need a motion to approve all the items under section 13, finance and operations, that's items 13.1 to 13.12. Do we have a motion? Second. Ms. Haynes, second by Ms. Norton. Any discussion of any of the items 13.1 to 13.12? Any questions by board members? We'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Gaddy? Abstain. On, the, on all of them? You're abstaining on all of the items? You called them as a group, so I, I abstained as a group. You, you can abstain on, to, on individual ones if you prefer. Well, you want to, well, I'm following the protocol that was put before. You called them as a group. I abstain. Okay. Ms. Gomez? Yeah. 
Yes. Ms. Haynes? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Owens? Abstain. Mr. Padilla? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. The motion carries. Next, item 14.1, it's the only item in section 14, general counsel. Do we have a motion? Move it. Mr. Padilla, second, second. Ms. Norton. Madam Chair. Board Member Bledsoe. I don't see what's listed uh, under the agenda. On the agenda. So. This was an item discussed in executive session? Well, it's not reflected here on my agenda, and that's why I'm questioning. It's not here. It's here, it's on here. 14.1 and 14.2. What is it? Uh, resolution of the board, uh, count of exit to approve the so settlement that, agreement. It's on the electronic agenda. So why is it, it, why is it not here? The resolution was posted yesterday. No. We'll have a roll call vote on, on the items in section 14. That is 14.1. Mr. Bledshoe no. Ms. Gaddy? Yes. Ms. Gomez? Yes. Ms. Haynes? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Owens? Yes. Mr. Padilla? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Motion carries. You can email Sunday. Next, we need a motion on the items within section 15, personnel. That's 15.1 to 15.5. Do we have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Padilla, move. Ms. Norton, second. We need a roll call vote on personnel items. If there are abstentions, you can abstain on all or any one of them. You can place it on the record. Or on, the, on the number or on the name. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Gaddy? Abstain. Ms. Gomez? Yes. Ms. Haynes? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Owens? Abstain. Mr. Padilla? Yes. Ms. Garcia? I'm abstaining. We have six yes votes. Motion carries. Did we have a, a motion? We had Mr. Padilla and Ms. Norton. Is that right? Yes. They, they were the motion and the second. <laughs> Next, we need a motion on all of the items within section 16. That Mo is 16.1. Program and instruction. Mm -hmm. Program and instruction, 16. <gasps> motion. Ms. Second. Gomez and Ms. Hill, we'll have a roll call. Madam Chair, discussion. I'm sorry, any discussion? Board Member Owens. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is our last block of voting, and in particular since this is, uh, quote unquote, my area, I just wanted to take a minute to comment in terms of uh, my abstention votes. So um, for a Board of Education, there are about six or seven key functions that we have, right? We are governance, we are not administrative, uh, we are not to uh, technically be involved in day-to-day, -day. that is under the purview of our superintendent, Mr. Roger Leon. However, one of the key functions of the board is to hire and evaluate a superintendent. And we have had as a board in, in numerous um, situations, conversations, um, questions about the goals of this board and more specifically the goals of the superintendent. So without me knowing clearly what the goals of this superintendent is, I cannot appropriately evaluate him as a board member and I cannot vote yes to even uh, resolutions and votes that I normally would say yes to because at the end of the day, even though there are things that I'm very excited about that are happening in this district and I respect Mr. Leon as well, it is my duty as a board member to know how all of these different actions are connected and also so that I can keep note of what the superintendent is and is not doing. So when it comes time to conduct the evaluation, which again, this board does not know when that's going to occur because we are failing to identify that, our actual role as a board, um, I cannot consciously, uh, consciously vote for um, <laughs> anything that's put in front of me because I'm not clear on how it's all connected. Thank you. 
Madam Chair. And I, Member and, I, Gaddy. and I just want to concur with my colleague, and we have been asking for the last two months. Uh, we have the only responsibility we have as an elected board is to ensure that we do our evaluations properly. Uh, and without us knowing what that is, it is very difficult to keep pushing and supporting um, the items that are put before us. Thank you. I'm going to do that separately because we have a motion on the table for 16. Any further discussion or questions on any of the items in section 16, program and instruction? Nope. We'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Gaddy? Yes. Ms. Gomez? Yes. Ms. Haynes? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Norton? This is yes. Yes, this is section 16. Ms. Owens? Abstain. Mr. Padilla? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Motion carries. Go back. There was the one point. item that should have been included in the personnel items. We had a motion on items 15.1 to 15.5, but there's also a 15.6 that we need a vote on. So do we have a motion for motion, item 15.6? Motion. 15. motion. Ms. Hill, no, Ms. Haynes, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Padilla, we'll have a roll call. Mr. 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 Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Gaddy? Yes. Ms. Gomez? Yes. Ms. Haynes? Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Owens? Abstain. Mr. Padilla? Yes. Ms. Garcia? Yes. Motion carries. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair? Board Member Bledsoe. Uh, thank you. Um, I know I, I did get here a little late, and sorry if you, due to uh, a prior commitment. You have to do the um, But I would like to okay. vote on the record for is. the board resolution 10.1 10 10 okay. as a yes. That's why I don't have. Can I make sure my corporation council gets her right? We have board. one additional. I'm sorry. We have further discussion. Sorry. Board Chair. I would like to do the same as well. Um, I was running late with traffic, uh, so I would like to vote yes on the 10.1 resolution. On 10.1? Mm -hmm. We'll add two additional votes. Yes. Yeah, harassment, intimidation, Bledsoe resolution. Uh, Bledsoe and Gomez. No. Yes to 10.1. Oh, yeah. But I didn't vote. No, I Got it, Martha? OK. Yes, ma'am. Who moved and seconded 16? 16 was Ms. Dawn, was Haynes, Ms. Haynes, and Mr. Padilla. And Padilla. Yes, yeah, 16. 16. Haynes moved it, Padilla seconded. I think. We have one additional item, 16.7, which mm -hmm. was a late starter. An added starter. Added starter. Program and instruction. Resolution of the Board of Education Gosh. to enter into a permit application with the city of Newark for the use of the S. James and K.A. Gibson Aquatic Center to conduct swimming instruction. Ms. Haynes. Ms. Hill, second. Roll call vote. Mr. Bledsoe. Wait, wait, any discussion, any is, questions about it? Is this it? an added item? Yes, it yes. is. Added what? This discussed it in an executive session board member Bledsoe so it's an added starter resolution for the Board of Education in the city of Newark to enter no, into I, I, Madam Chair, I got that but we have to get better with this process because um, this is not good okay when but board member hold on board member Bledsoe so before you continue they reached out to myself the board chair the vice chair and the chair of program and instruction Madam because chair. it's for New Jersey regional daycare students Madam, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm okay mm -hmm. with that and I, I will support this mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is that the number of items that are coming to this board at a last minute is unacceptable this has never been like this before well that's going to occur from time to time board member Bledsoe <laughs> I don't have a I, this is not a direct attack on the leader. No, 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 I'm I know that. I'm Listen, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you like for us to read the summary on the resolution, Board Member it's, it's Bledsoe? It's Okay. Vote. Do My you vote. have it on your agenda or no? You have it? 
Do you have it? Can we, we can continue with the motion. Okay. Sorry. Motion. Did we get a motion and a second on 16.7? Move. Motion. Mr. Bledsoe and Ms. Norton, any discussion? Any questions by board members? Mm. We'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Gaddy? Yes. Ms. Gomez? Yes. Ms. Haynes? Yes. Ms. Hill? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Owens? Stay. Mr. Padilla? Ms. Garcia? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so we just have some announcements. Tomorrow we'll have our Happy Halloween citywide Halloween parade and party. It's going to be at 147 Verona Avenue, Flamboyant Manor, from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The parade begins at the corner of Elwood Avenue and Mount Prospect Avenue, and it'll be turning right onto Verona, ending at Flamboyant Manor. We also have a spectacular Halloween parties in the city of Newark one in each ward. The North Ward will be at the Rotunda Recreational Center. West Ward will be at Boylan Street Recreation Center. South Ward will be at the Marcus Bow Porter Sports Complex on Lyons Avenue. East Ward will be at the SJKAG Recreation Aquatic Center on Rome Street. West Ward will be at Bradley Court Housing Complex, 75 North Munn. I also wanted to mention something that's really uh, near and dear to me on the city on the city on the newark public schools website you have the new jersey health public preparedness program it's a free training that is very expensive that i think all district staff teacher faculty nurses phys ed teachers should take they have a cpr first aid fire safety bleed control disaster planning run and hide and an aed training that will be held the the month of November and December. This course is a, a very expensive, so I really hope that district-wide staff take advantage that Rutgers University is offering it free. Also board members, some of us are teachers, some of us work with community members. I'm a certified person, and you never know when that one person may need CPR, AED, bleed control, or disaster planning. Um, and I think that's it for my announcements. Madam, announcements. Madam Chair. Board Member Haynes, Vice Chair Haynes, I'm sorry. As an ambassador of information, um, mm -hmm. in an effort to continue in the strength of the relationship between our schools and our community with uh, city programs I offer, that, are, that are offered through Newark Recreation Centers through our city, we have gymnastics that's offered, and all of these programs are for free on, at JFK. We have aquatic, aquatic lessons at JFK as well for beginners. Um, there's each and every Wednesday night from 7 to 7.30, Chicago Stepping Club. Uh, the City of Newark Step Team, join our traveling step team, step competitions, team building. That is located at 7, um, 30, 378 Lyons Avenue. Nork Watershed Camp, they go hiking. These are at different locations. Um, this Saturday, they will be leaving from out of the Ironbound Recreation Center. The Saturday after that is Hayes West, and the one after that is the Vince Lombardi Center. We offer martial arts at Boylan Street Rec, which is located at 916 South Orange Avenue. There's a Nork Chess Club that are located this at almost every rec we uh, have in the city. Boylan Street, JFK, uh, Ironbound, Bow Porter Complex, as well as the Rotunda Center, and that's the Newark Chess Club, yoga and meditation on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The first annual Father and Daughter Game Night, Creating Memories That Will Last, that will be November 16th, registration, um, registration from 5 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. at JFK Recreation Center. We also have the Ironbound Boxing Academy, which is also located, that's at the Sharp James Aquatic Center. High Level Fitness Boot Camp for Men and Women, that's at Several Recs JFK. The Youth Bowling Program, the Youth Martial Arts Tournament, which is Saturday, December 8th, and that concludes my announcements. Board Member Bledsoe was next. Um, two things. Um... I had the opportunity to sit in a uh, meeting with the superintendent uh, with a group of individuals, the Chinese delegation. Um, that meeting was very informative. 
Uh, I enjoyed, uh, you know, the dialogue that took place. Um, you know, um, I really commend our superintendent uh, for uh, uh, entertaining uh, 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 ambassadors from uh, another country. Uh, secondly, um, we are losing Robert Gregory uh, as the assistant superintendent, and I'd like to wish him a congratulations in his future endeavors. Thank you. Um, Chair. Chair. Excuse me. Board Member Hill. Go ahead, Flo. Um, so uh, I just wanted to acknowledge um, I went to um, West Side's homecoming football game and um, Principal Cook had acknowledged um, three teachers from Speedway Academy during the halftime show um, who were very instrumental in being mentors at, to some of the students at West Side High School. Um, I also wanted to commend some of the kids at um, Bard Early College Preparatory School who received their um, matriculation to become um, freshmen in um, college. And I would also like to commend um, several, two board members, um, board member Gaddy and board member Norton, who were also very instrumental in the Weekway um, Day of Giving Back. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. That's Indi it. Indian board, for life. Board member Gaddy? Yes, Indian for life. Um, I too want to uh, congratulate um, Robert Gregory and wish him the best in his future endeavors. I want to thank him for all that he has given um, to our students in this district. Um, then also I want to remind folks for those who are celebrating Halloween, our children will be out in the street to please um, slow up, be very careful. Um, and likewise, I want to commend the crossing guards. Um, they have been on top of their jobs this year. Um, uh, they are doing a great job. Um, last year around this time, there was a lot of um, issues and concerns with some of the parents as I'm driving around to the schools and especially at um, some of the, when you come down some of the main streets, they even have volunteer parents who are at intersections um, that are assisting our children. So I just want folks to be mindful a lot will be happening during this Halloween celebration. And so just remember our children are out there. Thank you. I would also like to mention that the city of Newark is actually enforcing a curfew law for Halloween. So if you can all share this with your neighbors, families, and friends, the curfew law, it, kids have to be home by 10 p.m., which they should be home by 10 p.m., but uh, it's gonna be any minors unaccompanied 18 years or under whom are 100 yards from their residence between the hours of 10 and six will be in violation and they hold the parents accountable with a fine. So let's please make sure we have a safe trick-or-treating, go out, enjoy it, uh, you know, be very safety conscious at all times during our surroundings as the sun set and make sure that our kids are home by 10 p.m. Any other board members? I have one more thing. Board member Hill. <laughs> um, so I would just like to acknowledge the superintendent for the um, acknowledging my son who is a freshman at Arts High School when he had some issues and some concerns that he wanted to address the superintendent with and you know he went above and beyond to address not only my son's concerns but also board member Gaddy's son's concerns <laughs> as well because her son is also a freshman at Arts High School as well. So I just wanted to commend you um, superintendent just for taking the time out and listening to the issues and concerns that my son voiced not only for himself but his other peers also as well. Thank you. And there was no favoritism. Any other board members? Most no? Most so this concludes our regular board meeting held tonight at Science Park High School. Thank you for everyone being patient and attending. You See you much. next month. A motion to motion. adjourn. Motion. Second. And Ms. Hill, all in favor? Aye. Motion adjourned, 10.04.